It's been a little while, Dolphin fans, but I figure after this third, well, fourth, technically second day of free agency, I just kind of check in because here's the deal. Dolphin fans, we jump, uh, you know, on and off cliffs just so quickly and so much. And, you know, the beginning of free agency, yeah, it didn't look real good for Miami Dolphins. And the one thing I was saying was, I hear was everybody's ready to just, like, cook Chris Greer. Oh, Greer's done. Greer's awful. Greer can't do this. Greer can't do that. You know what? It's time, Dolphin fans. Let's step back for a minute. I may not have always been the biggest fan, but it's time to put some respect on Chris Greer's name. And let's figure out exactly what he's really done for the Miami Dolphins. Okay, coming into free agency, at one point we were almost $50 million over the cap. Okay, with impending free agents such as Christian Wilkins, Van Ginkle, uh, Raquan Davis, Robert Hunt, uh, a lot of guys that, that were key contributors last year. And that's a tough spot to be in. Um, so you got to make a decision. What are you going to do if you're the Dolphins, right? Um, those names I just mentioned to you, Christian Wilkins, Andrew Van Ginkle, Brandon Jones, Deshaun Elliott, Raquan Davis, Robert Hunt. Next year, combined teams around the NFL are going to be paying those guys $74.1 million. $74.1 million for just those names. So you have a decision to make if you're the Dolphins. Right? Do you go chase that and, and try to pay that and, and figure everything else out? How are you going to get that cap number down? But instead, Chris Greer pivoted like a champ because losing those guys also equals up getting us about four to five compensatory draft picks on the second day next year. That works out. Second day picks are usually pretty good. I can name a couple who've made great impacts for the Miami Dolphins. So in turn, what did we do? We, we, we had to twist here. We had to figure out a way to get this done. So Christian Wilkins is gone. What do you do? We try to replace him. Maybe not replace all the way. Benito Jones, uh, Neville Gilmore, uh, bringing in the defensive tackles to kind of play those places. They're probably going to be more the Raquan Davis guys that are going to fill in on that. We're never going to replace Christian Wilkins. He got his bag. Good for him, man. I hope he does great with Max Crosby out in Vegas. Okay, but we bring those guys in. Okay, we lose Brandon Jones. We lose Deshaun Elliott. Those guys are making a combined nine million dollars next year. We were able to sign Jordan Poyer, former All Pro, had a little bit of a down year, a couple of injuries for two million dollars. Is it a one-year prove-it deal? Sure is. But that's okay. Jordan Poyer is going to be replacing that at $2 million compared to the 9.6 that we let walk, okay? On the edge, we lose Van Ginkle. That's a tough one, man. Van Ginkle goes. I really hoped he would stay. Good luck to him again, too. But we bring in Shaq Barrett. Van Ginkle's making 10. Shaq Barrett's making 9. Shaq Barrett, again, former All-Pro. He's on a small prove-it deal. Okay, you're picking up a pattern here of what's happening because the Dolphins also know that coming up, we have Javon Holland and Jalen Waddle that we're going to have to pay. Okay, so we're not tying ourselves into long-term deals here, but can we get contributors? I think Jordan Poyer is going to more than step in for that. Talking about a linebacker, um, you know, Jerome Baker is going to be gone. I guess you can count, uh, you know, Deshaun Elliott there, but or not Deshaun Elliott, but uh, Van Ginkle. But we bring in Jordan Brooks at 10 mil a year. Um, I, I think that's a great deal. We actually have him for a couple of years because he's still a very young linebacker. It's going to do some damage in there with David Long Jr. Also brought in Anthony Walker Jr. He's going to play a role. Um, you know, not your starter, but he's going to plug into the linebacker depth um, in the interim of that. So um, we, we have Connor Williams, who's a free agent, go out and sign Aaron Brewer. Aaron Brewer coming from the Tennessee Titans. What's funny is the knock on Brewer has been, oh, he's a small center, he's not very good at pass blocking, but he gets out in the run. Dude, that's Connor Williams. <laughs> it's exact Connor Williams. And just like Connor Williams, he used to play guard. So there's still an off chance if Connor Williams wants to play, we sign him. And now we work him and Brewer between center and guard, whatever fits, fits. Okay, at the cornerback position, we cut Xavier Howard. Everybody thinks that's gonna hurt. Turn around, what do we do? We bring in Kendall Fuller. Kendall Fuller, once again, former All-Pro. Um, you know, in Washington, I think a bad defense made him look worse than he was. I have Kendall Fuller lining up on the other side of Jalen Ramsey, who, by the way, restructured his contract to make sure we could do these things. Um, and then re-signed uh, Ahmed, re-signed Nick Needham, uh, re-signed Robert Jones, brought in Saran Neal. It's going to be under the radar, a cornerback uh, and special teams guy out of Buffalo. He's a special teams ace, and our special teams were awful. So we do all that. So all these guys I just mentioned to you, okay, let's go back over to your Wilkins, your Van Ginkle, your Jones, your Elliott's, your Raekwon, your Robert Hunt. That's $74 million. I'm going to run it back to you. Jordan Poyer, Shaq Barrett, Jonu Smith. 
Didn't even mention that one. How about that deal? John o. Smith coming in at like $4.2 million as a pass catching tight end on the other side of Durham Smythe. Um, Jordan Brooks, Aaron Brewer, Kendall Fuller, re-signing Needham, Andy, Anthony Walker Jr., Neville Gilmore, Slavon Ahmed. You know how much all that cost us? Let's go for $46.25 million. All right. 46.25 brings you all of these pieces that are going to be vital to what we do next year. Nothing that you're tied into long term. Everything that you can get out of in one or two years, you can re-sign on prove-it deals. You can still keep moving. The offense is still the offense, okay? Um, we've still got playmakers all over the place and still some free agency to work with to see what we can do. So at the end of the day, Dolphin fans, stop looking at big name and start looking at football moves right? These little pieces that fall underneath that people don't pay that much attention to, they're the ones who make the difference to put you over the edge moving forward into hopefully the playoffs and even further. So at the end of the day, stop banging on Greer. Let Greer cook because this year he did a hell of a job so far putting this team back together coming from what everybody called the capocalypse, okay? He came back together and he's done a wonderful job so far and we still got some ways to go. At the end of the day, Chris Greer deserves more respect than we've been giving him Dolphin fans, so step up to it. Fins up.